So Pompo the Cinephile is, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to call it like an anime all about filmmaking because it seems to exist in kind of like this more like, um, uh, like this more fantastical version of what a lot of people dream that, um, that making a movie is like. Um, and on that level, it's it's actually kind of admirable, even if it does seem to like shave off a few corners here and there, um, just to make it like a little bit more fantastical and whimsical, um, and to have a lot of anime tropes, which um, it did not surprise me. Like I didn't know this until I watched the film, but apparently it's based on a manga, and you can tell what type of manga it was trying to be. So, it the film takes place in uh, this fictional version of Hollywood that I believe is called uh, Niollywood. I believe it's called... It's something weird like that. It starts with NY. Uh, but it, basically, it's a fictional version of Hollywood um, in which apparently there's a whole bunch of, like, odd... A whole bunch of, like, odd developments that have made certain filmmaking possible. Specifically with the character of um, Popo, who is apparently a... I, I assume like she's a she's like a teenager or at least like a young adult who's this very like squat little little anime girl who acts like a typical anime girl who's a producer of this big Hollywood studio and apparently since she, apparently she's like a huge like child prodigy she's basically like the Dookie Hauser of um, <laughs> of film producing um, so she runs her own studio she basically specializes in B movies um, and she basically calls all the shots. Uh, surprisingly, though, the, the film isn't really about her so much as it's about um, Gene Finney, who is this basically production assistant who's wanting to break into movies. And Gene, they establish, is someone who's like way, 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 way dedicated to his craft. And you can tell that by the fact that his character is designed with like permanent bags under his eyes. Yeah, And you, you do feel at least that the, this guy's got to be in at least in his 20s, just because... they. His height's a little bit more, he acts like a little less childish. He acts like, you know, that person who's stayed up way too late for his finals. Um, and Gene is basically given, like, the, the, the chance of a lifetime here. Basically, Papo sees that, you know, because this guy is devoted to everything filmmaking, uh, she takes a chance on Gene. She says, like, hey, we got a B-movie coming up. Can you edit our trailer for it? And, of course, he takes to this, like, because he's been taking notes the whole time, he takes to this, like, it's uh, like it's an amazing experience. Um, and that's the one thing I gotta mention, like, this film, I think, is something that uh, a lot of, like, video editors are really gonna love, just because they, in the same way that, like, anime would stylize stuff like cooking and, um, and, like, tennis with Prince of Tennis, this anime, um, tries to heighten and stylize video editing. So there's this, there's this, this whole great sequence where, whenever, like, Gene is editing film, where he imagines himself in this world with just, like, constant, like, strings of, like, film and just him with a sword dicing it up and cutting it up, which is, which is adorable. It's, it's, it's fun and it's cute in that, on that angle. Um, and it's also great to see how Gene kind of, like, gets excited, you know, the further that he gets in the process, because then the trailer does so well that, um, Pompo decides, oh, well, you know, what's the next step for you? Oh, let's, let's get you directing a film. I just wrote this script. How, how about you direct it? And just like, oh, okay, well, this is a dream come true. Um, and at the same time, he's also working with um, uh, with another actress uh, who's just uh, who Papo just takes a chance on. So basically, it's like Papo is kind of like the the good businessman who gives all these you know youngsters a fair shot at breaking into films. Um, so there, I mean, there's a little bit of like a concerning angle on that on that level, but at the same time, it's a lot of fun to watch just Gene get really excited about like you know trying to develop. <clears throat> trying to develop his own film. At the same time, however, there's um, th there's a little bit of, like a simplistic nature here that I think it doesn't quite a explore as much as like the cynical side of of things. It feels a lot like um, and I was trying to think of like what this reminded me of, and I, I think it reminds me a bit of like the films of Juzo Otami. Um, basically, Juzo Otami did like a whole bunch of films about like um you know, characters who are very invested in their career and love their jobs. So stuff like um, A Taxing Woman and Supermarket Woman and Tam Popo did all those pictures. It's very similar to that. Um, and it's also similar in how it kind of like romanticizes the process and doesn't really show much of a huge, like like the, the, the darker side of it, like I said. Um, like for instance, when we get to the third act, 
Um, Gene is basically, like, he's tasked with editing this film after having successfully shot it, which, it's a lot of fun watching him shoot, because it's fun to watch, like, his mind reel and try to, like, figure, like, try to figure out stuff that he can do on set that works, and seeing it pay off, like, just electrifies him, but then he gets to the editing process, and it just wears him down to the point where he's overworked, and he can barely, barely function by the end of it, um, and you can't help but feel like there's there should be, like, some moment where he's kind of got to, like, recognize, like, you know, how grueling the process could be. Um, just for, like, a little bit of a moment. It feels like we get a little bit of that, but not as much as it could have been. Because, again, the film wants to be very heartfelt. Wants to, like, you know, see Gene push forward and succeed the further that he goes. Um, and on that level, it kind of works. It's it's kind of admirable to, to show, like, this film where filmmaking looks like a fun and exciting experience. Uh, where it kind of rounds off the corners, which are kind of a little bit concerning, is how uh, Gene doesn't really push back on too much. Like, th they do kind of tr kind of stress that, like, look, Gene, if you want to be a director, you've got to, like, take charge here. Um, but I think there's, like, a little bit of a concerning moment where apparently one of the specifications from Pompo is that Gene needs to keep this film uh, 90 minutes exactly. Um, and it's mainly because Pompo says that, you know, like films that are too long, you know, most, most people won't see them and they're, they're not that good. So you got to keep it 90 minutes, um, which, um, I'm kind of conflicted about because like on one level, like you, you, you don't want to feel like you're, you're that much, like you're that restricted, even though like it, like from a business perspective, obviously it makes sense. Um, so I guess like in, in that range of like, you know, dealing with a producer who's trying to make a commercial movie, it would make sense. The thing is the film that Gene is working on is, like, it's supposed to be, like, an Oscar contender. It's meant to be, like, an Academy Award winning film, and, like, it's about a, it's about a maestro, and, like, him coming to terms with himself, and he has, he, he ventures out to the country, he has a romance, and all these dramatic elements, um, and Papa wants to cut down to 90 minutes, and it nearly drives Gene mad, and the thing is, if this were just, like, a weird B-movie, I could understand that, but, like, the, the thing is, like, a lot of a lot of Academy Award films are actually kind of a little bit longer than 90 minutes, and some of them are ridiculously long, in fact. I mean, like, you might remember from this year's Academy Awards, like, uh, Drive My Car. That film is three hours long. <laughs> I mean, of course, yeah, it's not much much of an audience pleaser, but it, it feels weird that, because I feel like there's a bigger discussion there about, you know, what, you know, what, what films do you want to be awards-worthy, and which one do you want to be um, audience pleasers? And I guess on that level, it's... It's easier to relate to Tom, uh, to, I said Tam Popo, it, Pompo. <laughs> Juice or Tommy on the brain here. Um, and, and on that level, it's kind of like interesting to relate to Pompo as like a business person because she feels very much like, um, going back to a Tommy again, it feels very much like a taxing woman um, in that regard. And then watching someone become like an apprentice of it. In terms of like, and there are like some very clear, it's weird because, like, it exists in, like, this, like, kind of fictional universe, but it kind of has, like, some shades of reality. Like, the whole 90-minute rule comes up when Gene says he wants to watch Cinema Paradiso, um, which is a very long movie. It's, like, it's, I think it's roughly three hours. And Papo says, like, oh, I can't really stand it because the, the film is too long. So, apparently, in this universe, um, Cinema Paradiso exists in some form. We don't quite know what. Uh, but then you also have, like, a few, um, like, stand-ins. Like, you have, uh, there's an actor that he works with that he loves called um, Martin Braddock, who I think is supposed to be kind of like a Marlon Brando, uh, Marlon Brando type, who has a little bit of an ego, a little bit of insight, and just is a very committed actor. Um, and th there's, there's little, like, shades of, like, different types of films you can see there, like, uh, the B-movie they're working on in the beginning of the film is just wonderfully absurd and involves, like, tentacles and monsters and bikinis and machine guns. It's, like, it, it, it's, it's a film that Roger Corman would have loved. <laughs> and the fact that, like, Pompo goes from that film into, like, a big awards-worthy film is, it, it's kind of unique. Um, I think, like I said, I think the people who are gonna love this most are gonna be editors, just because, like, part of the first act and then nearly all the third act is just like, um, it's just stylizing the editing process. Um, the, the second act I think is, is just beautiful for how they want to make, um, the very act of filmmaking look amazing and like, you know, fast paced and where you get to like keep up and try to keep your mind creative on the job and on set. 
um, that it mostly works. Um, but again, like it's, it's one of those things where it's like you really do have to place it in that universe because it, there's a lot of like hidden darkness they don't quite show about like the filmmaking process that they kind of stylize a little bit too much here that I wish would have been ex expanded upon. But in terms of just being like kind of like um a more like fanciful and anime style uh, depiction of filmmaking, especially like, I forgot to mention this too. There's a whole sequence where they try to convince uh, an accountant agency to um, give them more money to finish up the extra scenes they want to shoot for their film. And it's staged in a, you know, like in a very like over the top, like, you know, like you clap if you believe in this film type of way um, that involves live streaming, which you, like in in any other universe, this probably wouldn't work. But in this film, where uh, where everything is meant to be like um you know exaggerated and heartfelt, you could kind of believe it working here. Um, so like in terms of just you know having fun with the filmmaking process, I think this film mostly works, and I really do hope that it inspires um some of the youngsters who will probably watch this anime to you know. You know, tr you know, venture out there. Just make your own film. Even even if you can't get into a studio, just just do it because you love it. Because I, I do like the fact that Gene really loves this stuff and uh, Popo, to a certain degree, kind of loves it, even though it, it sounds strange. Like, it sounds like she's kind of, like, come become past that part of, like, her life where it, fe where it feels like she's become too hardened despite kind of looking like a small anime girl. <laughs> um but uh but in general i i kind of dug the film for like it's 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 little bits here and there like overall i do have some problems with the structure and the route that gene takes and how easy stuff comes to him and having like you know like the good capitalist who comes to save the day um but in terms of like the the drive for like passion and all that the, the film works on that level it's it's very close to like a, a juice otami film